morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. As you can tell by my shirt, we are going to do a vlog today on the Smoky Mountain Songbird. If there were ever five words never said together, I think it would have to be, I don't like Dolly Parton. I don't think there's anyone in the world that can say they don't like this lady. She's the sweetest, nicest, most giving, great personality, great attitude. What's there not to like? Today, we're gonna go explore, well, we're going to try and find Dolly's cabin that she grew up in. I know it's behind a fence, but I wanna go at least see where it's at out there. And then I wanna take us to the cemetery where Dolly's family is buried. So I hope you enjoy this vlog. Let's go have a little Dolly Parton fun today. And let's go start it out at her statue out by the courthouse here in town. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. We're heading out of Pigeon Forge. Saying goodbye to King Kong up there. Don't go anywhere, I'll see you next time. We're heading out to Sevierville. That's what you call it. I think that's how you say it. I'm not local. Don't hassle me, I'm local. What movie's that from? What about Bob? There's the Titanic. I'd say we're on the right trail, because that's what we're looking for. Well, the circumstances are not ideal, but we'll roll with it. Like I said, we'll, we'll roll with it. Well, right here in front of the courthouse, as I mentioned earlier, one of the greatest honors she's ever had. She said maybe the greatest honor she's ever had. Smoky Mountain Songbird, the Backwoods Barbie. Right in front of the courthouse is a great statue of smiling Dolly Parton. Now she said, honestly, this was maybe the greatest thing that ever happened in her life because she said she grew up dirt poor in a cabin, just a couple of rooms. She was fourth of 12 children. Father couldn't read or write. And she said, and then for me, to have a statue right in downtown, right in front of the courthouse, where all the birds can come and poop all over me is quite an honor. And she really meant it. And what she said was she found out later that her father was so proud of this statue that he used to come here at night with a bucket with soap and water and a broom and he would come out here and clean her statue. He would clean all the dirt and all the pigeon poop off her statue and she said that just brought her to tears when she found that out because she said she knew how proud he was of her. Said even though they didn't have much, her parents were great parents and it was her going to church at her grandpa's church, which was her mother's father that really instilled the love of music in her. She said it wasn't seeing famous country stars or anything like that. It was our relatives coming over to the house with guitars and us sitting around and playing music and us singing gospel music at my grandpa's church. That's really what it was. And she said when she was growing up, she was taught that you could do anything with God's love. And, and she said she never forgot that. And she started writing songs, if you can believe it, at the age of five years old. She wrote her first song on a guitar at five years old. By the age of 10, she was a regular on the Cass Walker Show. At the age of 13, she debuted at the Grand Old Opry. Johnny Cash introduced her. And by golly, she got three encores from the fans. They couldn't get enough of Dolly. How great, huh? Now wait till you see when we finally get out. Hopefully we'll get to see it. We can see where she grew up the area. And then to know what an entrepreneur she is with Dollywood and she donates so much money to help children learn how to read because of the situation her father was in. But she said, I may look artificial on the outside, but I like to believe that I'm 100% real and 100% everything else. And she said that it was actually coming to town here that inspired her look. She said they used to come to town and one day she saw the town tramp. And she said, I don't mean to speak negatively about anyone, but that's what she was called. And she said she had this beautiful blonde hair and these perfect red lips and eyeshadow and everything. And she said, and I just thought, mama, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And she said, I thought someday that's how I'm gonna look. And that's where her 
That's where her look came from. She said even when she was poor growing up that she used to burn matchsticks and take the ash from there and rub it on for beauty marks and eyeshadow and things like that. And she never did have kids. She was married to Carl Dean who she met on her very first day in Nashville when she went to go be a superstar. She was at a laundry mat and he pulled up and they met each other. Two years later they were married but she never had kids. And one of the reasons that a lot of people believe that that was the case is because when she was growing up, she had so many brothers and sisters that um, apparently her mother used to have all the older kids watch the, the new babies and she was assigned to her brother Larry when he was born. So she would have to get up with him and nurse, like, you know, if he woke up in the middle of the night, take care of him and all that. And, and he ended up dying uh, when he was a, a youngin. And a lot of people said she just never really got over that. So now we're gonna head out to the family cemetery where her parents are buried and other relatives. And then we're gonna go on an adventure to find her cabin, hopefully. And they have a nice military tribute right here in front of the courthouse as well. Right here with this statue of the eagle. So Dolly pretty much eventually made her name on the Porter Wagoner show. She ended up joining the show in, I believe it was 1967, and stayed there for 10 years. And then when she decided to leave, she wrote Porter Wagoner a song, which was I will always love you. She went into his office and said, I need to play you something. Sat down and played him the song and then told him that she was leaving the show. And he was upset. He ended up suing her. And it was a pretty hard moment in their relationship. She ended up taking years to pay him off the settlement, but they did end up becoming friends. And when Porter died, she went to his bedside and visited him at his death and said that she would always love him and that he was one of the biggest people to ever be in her life. Pretty touching story. And many people probably know that Elvis wanted to record that song, but the Colonel wanted Dolly to give away her songwriting publishing, and she didn't want to do it. So Elvis never recorded I Will Always Love You, and eventually Dolly made it a hit, and then Whitney Houston, of course, made it a hit in The Bodyguard. Now, if you've ever been out to the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area, you know that this is a heavy, heavy tourist area. And Dolly is now the largest employer in this community. Pretty cool story. A woman that went from what she considered dirt poor to being the biggest employer in town. Awesome car, wow. I guess that's what they mean by the Great Smoky Mountains. It's definitely no joke, I've seen countless log cabins out here. Nice change of pace. I love it. Watch out for deer. Dolly's Drive. Well, here it is. If you weren't looking for it, you certainly could miss it. You could drive right past it, because I did. We're just gonna park right over here and head over to the fence beside us to the right. All right, just driving up the hill, as I looked over to the right, when I say this is a Dolly Parton's family cemetery, it's not only her family, but I'd say a good portion of it is because her mother's side were the Owens, her father's side were of course the Partons, and you're gonna see a whole lot of Owens and Partons here. So many so that it would be very easy to miss some of them. I'll point out the ones that I know who they are because there's an Owens and a Parton both over here. And like I said, Dolly had 12, she was one of 12, and then all of her siblings had kids, and so she's got cousins and everyone. This one's Peachy Parton.
And over here is Lizzie Owens and Jerry Owens. There's Father J.R. Owens. Here's Melinda Owens. And here's Leona and Vonnie Owens. And I know there's some Partons over here. Let's see. We'll go right through. That's a beautiful headstone, even though it's not anyone that I believe is related to her. And now as we come over here, you can see there's I Will Always Love You on here. James Owens, Wilma Owens. And then here's O'Neill Parton, Bowman Parton, and over here is Colleen Parton, and over here into thy hands I commend my spirit. That's Carl Parton. A lot of flies out here. Here's Wayne Parton. And Cora Lewis Parton. And Reverend Marshall Parton. The infant sons of Marshall and Cora. Oh, that's sad. Trying to save kind of more prominent ones for last. But I did say we were coming out, so coming out here. Here's William Pink Parton. And Dicey Jane. And here's Charlie Parton. And that one says, are you a Christian? Dolly used to jokingly say people thought she was Catholic because she had, was one of 12, but she said, no, we were just a randy bunch of hillbillies. <laughs> Horny randy bunch of hillbillies. And over here, we're gonna pass Charles Owens. Like I said, this was her family cemetery. I, I figured we should put most of the family on here. I was hoping we would find her uncle, Billy, Billy Owens. So I think that might be Billy, her uncle. Oh, and that's J.R. Parton. That's a really nice headstone. It's a little covered up, but Cool thing about Dolly is that her family recognized her talent and her uncle Billy was the one that saw that she was special and he used to take her out. See, we're actually gonna make our way over on this other side of the fence. This is the section called Angel Hill where Dolly's parents are buried. But her uncle used to take her around to all the, to give her performances, like take her to different places she could perform which I thought was really cool. Daddy. So that was her grandparents. Her dad's parents. Yeah, so when she started to become big, she just said, I always had an outgoing personality and I just thought, you know, I love music. Why not try and make something out of it? She said that I didn't try and get away from my family. I brought them all with me. I gave them all jobs and yeah. A lot of them work in the shows at Dollywood as performers and different things. There's just some great headstones. And then over here, our darling Angel Kay. 
Now we're gonna walk over and take this little stairwell up. And these are all Partons as well. That's right across from this chapel. Here's Angel Hill. So the gates to drive up were locked, but there's a little opening here by the gazebo. So I would assume that this is where Dolly will be buried at some point. Here's Tiver Louise Parton. If I had to guess, I guess somewhere right around here. Who knows? Our folks are right over here. Or maybe this empty one is gonna be hers at some point. Maybe a statue on top or something. Yeah, there's her mom and dad. Robert Lee and A.V. Lee Owens. She said her mom had a mountain voice. Great singer, acapella singer. Then there's little Larry that I mentioned earlier. And this is Floyd Estelle Parton. Not sure who that is. She said her mom's side was a pretty musical family. That would have been an uncle or a cousin. So if you're looking for some great Dolly Parton tunes to listen to, check out if you don't listen to her normally. Give a try Jolene, of course, and Coat of Many Colors. Sorry, it's a little bumpy. Um, she does a great duet with Willie Nelson that I love called um, To the Moon and Back. From here to the moon and back, so good. So now we're heading up to Dolly's house on Locust Ridge. There's some really narrow roads up here. Wow. Couldn't find the precise location of her grandpa's church. And in fact, all over the place online, it had two different names, but they kept saying it was in Cleveland, Tennessee, and I just couldn't find the location or I would have went. Sorry. And an interesting thing about Dolly, she has recorded hundreds if not thousands of songs that have not come out. So she said, long after she's dead, her music will still be new and coming out released. Pretty smart move, huh? At least for your legacy. She'll never be able to spend the money, that's for sure. All right, I know for sure we're going the right way if I see Evans Chapel. That's one of our landmarks. Bingo. Well, we've made it out here. Pretty high fence, so we won't get to see anything, but still pretty cool just to come out and know that on the other side of this property is where Dolly grew up. I was hoping maybe through like the, the fence or something, she'd go, you know what? I know people want to see it. I'll make it just, you know, so you can see it, but probably not. Actually, wait, wait a minute. You kind of can. Let's look. Way out there, there's something. I would never trespass here anyway. I'm sure they have cameras everywhere and just out of respect for her, no, but I did want to come out and just kind of feel like, you know, just kind of take in the air and the trees and everything that she grew up with and made her the person she is today. She always says that. She says, you know, my whole upbringing is who I am. It's me, it's my music, it's everything. So kind of cool to just come out here and at least through the little holes in the fence, she was at least nice enough to leave those. We can kind of see just a little bit of the property. Yeah, you know, they said when Dolly lived up here that the family didn't have running water or electricity, so they would often wash their clothes in the creek and they would wash themselves in the creek as well. And uh, the only form of entertainment really they had was they had a battery operated radio that sometimes would get signal and Dolly said they would have to, their dad would yell for them to put water down on a certain spot to get better reception. <laughs> what a life. And look at what she's done now. So she very well could have been bathing in this creek. 
You know, I saw in an interview that Dolly said every time she comes back here, she always craves the water because she always loved the natural water out of here. And so she said, every time I come back, I look forward to drinking it. And then when I drink it, I do think it's just the best thing I ever tasted. So it is tempting. I do almost want to stick my head under this little nozzle and taste a little bit of it, but I don't think I'm going to. Cause I'm thinking a lot could have changed in the 50 years since she was growing up here. She is absolutely, her and Elvis, it's like proof that dreams do and can come true. If you have an outgoing personality and a dream, a little bit of talent, well, in their case, a lot of talent, anything is possible. That's about all we can see. And it looks like this is a guard shack, so at least maybe most of the time they have someone here at least keeping an eye on the place. Maybe through this one we can see a little bit more. Now it looks like that might just be a bridge out there that we were looking at earlier. Because I noticed there's a little like pathway that goes upward right up here. So the house might be up there. I wonder if there's any significance to this tree because you would think if there wasn't, they'd probably get rid of it or else somebody would probably try and climb it and look over. <laughs> Not much you can see. I think she was, I, I honestly believe she did that on purpose. Left the little gaps in there just to let people see just a little bit. It seems like a dolly thing to do, don't you think? Well, my friends, we're going to call it a night. I want to thank Tracy Main and Curtis Mansfield for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you, Dolly Parton, for being you. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm just kind of happy to have gotten to do this vlog today. I got to see the statue. I got to see where she'll probably be buried, where her parents are buried, and Locust Ridge, where she grew up. I'm happy. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Tomorrow, or the next time you see a vlog, it will not be in Tennessee. We will be in Kentucky, so have a great night, and I'll see you all then. Goodbye. Thank you.